Hey, what up? It's Lizelle Osama, the Trench Baby. Make sure y'all go check me out on Bootleg Kev Podcast. You know how we rock. Glah! Bootleg Kev Podcast special guest in here from Chicago. Your new project just dropped. For sure, Trench Baby 3. Trench Baby 3, Lil Zay Osama is in the building, man. Welcome. So. Welcome, welcome. Is this a new, is this a relatively new chain? The Trench Baby tr- chain? Uh, I probably got this like a year ago. No, like nine months ago. That's a serious so piece of ice right there. Trench what? Baby with the ski mask on it. And the, mis- and the, the matching ring. Yeah. That's what's, that, I've never seen the ring chain. That's Osama. That, oh, that's, that's Osama Bin Laden. Nah. Osama, Lizzie Osama. Okay. Uh, How did you get your name, man? Um, Let's get the mic right. If, if you can move the mic in, in front um, of you, yeah, yeah, perfect. Yeah, at first, at first, they was calling me like Zay Zay, you know, Lil Zay, you know. Me being in the streets for a long time, you know, it just thought Osama, oh, Osama. Oh, mm-hmm. I guess it was off the street shit, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, how long has it been since you decided? to fully focus on music and get out of the streets fully? Because a lot of people do the one foot in, one foot out shit. For real, since I got out of jail, because, you know, I wouldn't do a juvenile life. And then when I got out, you feel me? It's just like, yeah, I got to focus on my craft, you know? I got to get my people mm-hmm. out the hood. I got to get myself together. And that's really the only lane I knew, you know? Mm-hmm. I wouldn't, I, I I know how to adapt to anything, like hustling, fraud, whatever. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But it's like, that wasn't what I wanted to do. You know what I'm saying? The music, what I wanted to do. So, yeah. yeah. Yo. You can't open the door, can you? Recording. You go in there. You want water? Boom. Got to hydrate. Got to get the water, man. Um. So you said that. Uh. You obviously you did some time in juvenile. What time did you get locked up? You were 16. Um. When I was 15. 15, and then when did you get out? When I was. I don't know. I was, I was 19 when I got out. So you did four years in between juvie. So when you got arrested, did you go from juvenile hall to like the adult shit? No, nah, I went from um, the Adi home, which is our juvenile correctional center. And then I went from the Adi home and got sentenced. And then I went to DOC, Department of Corrections, the little DOC. You can't be over 21 enough. Got you. Yeah. So you ended up doing time... As a juvenile, and then all, and then moving on to the actual like being in jail with like people yeah. who are adults and shit. Yeah, yeah for sure. so that was like a something that kind of shook you up, obviously. No, nah, hell no. Nah. No, nah? I, I was already used to it. You know, I was in the streets. I was going to do thirty days, then get out, go do sixty days, then get out, go do two months, three, four months, get out. You feel me? I was always back and forth, locked up when mm. I was a young nigga. Just with nothing you so weren't when used that, to. When that real time came. It, it was like I was already used to it, for real. Damn, what was your charge? I had an aggravated discharge of a firearm. Um, I had an um, armed robbery. I had a um, vehicular hijacking. I had a couple of shit. A lot of shit. Yeah. Four years yeah. worth of shit. A lot of shit. <laughs> <laughs> well, you made it, man. You made it out from the other side. No, for sure that. I saw uh, that you said that back in the day you used to rob all the cameramen in Chicago. Come on, man! Don't do that. <laughs> well, I, had, I had my little ups and downs, you know. I did my, I did my little wrong shit. I was know? gonna say, like, um, did you ever spin the block on the cameraman where they ended up working with you later on? Because you know, there's, there's only a few cameramen. I'm sure. I mean, I don't know. I don't even, for real, for real. I don't even remember all the dumb shit I used to be on back then when I was on some shorty shit. But like. I used to be on some goofy shit like that, but I don't remember exactly all the ones. You know, it probably is because all the cameramen fuck with me. Yeah, you know, I am who I am today. You know, I overcame all that shit. So, a lot of the cameramen fuck with me. It probably been one of their ass. I don't even remember. That shit's That's crazy. So long ago. It feels like a cameraman's probably the easiest lick, right? In certain situations, I was really, I was. It wasn't like I was doing it for no money. I was really doing it to get my own camera to shoot my own videos and have my my cameraman shoot my videos. Type so you stuff. would jack the nice camera, yeah, give, give it, it to give your it to cameraman, yeah. and then be like, "You got new equipment, shoot yeah. my shit." I'm a homie. That's not a bad. Uh, I mean, listen, that's not bad. At least you weren't like 
At least there was a some sort of purpose. You were doing yeah, it to further sure. your career. Everything I do is, a, is for a purpose. Yeah. You know? It ain't never for no reason. 100%. You know? Trench Baby 3, you got some dope features on here. I swear Vezo is one of my favorite artists is on there. Uh, yeah, obviously, my dog. Shout out Ice. Congrats Bro. to him at the QC situation. Yeah, for sure. Uh, obviously, Dirk, Herbo. Um, for you, like, this is technically, is this your first project, like, as, like, under a major? No, nah, hell no. Nah. I did Hood Bible. I did Trench Baby 1. I oh, did was Trench Warner? Baby 2. Yeah, yeah. So this is, okay, so you, so you this. This Hood Bible. I did Hood Bible. I did Trench Baby 1, Trench Baby 2, and this Trench Baby 3. So four mixtapes since I've been under one. So is this considered a tape or a more? That's a mixtape. Okay. Yeah. These days, I hate I hate the mixtape. I was like, gonna say it, these it days, how like do you boot, differentiate? It feel like a bootleg. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. But like, how do you? What's the album to the mixtape difference? Like, it feels like it's all this fucking same nowadays. I don't know. That shit is kind of the same, but I don't like calling it a mixtape because it feel like I'm saying my shit bootleg or some shit. You know, you know why the I like to call it a project or an album. You know why the you label know, likes it better. though, because the label doesn't count it against your contract, so they love it when it's called a mixtape. No, not necessarily. Most if most recoup, situations. If you recoup, you know, mm -hmm. and that bitch go gold or some shit, they gonna count that bitch as an album. Yeah, they have to. Yeah, yeah, that's they gonna fair. count that motherfucker as an album. So, uh, do you? Because I feel like your buzz is like really catching fire. Um, For sure. What do you think? Like, uh, has been the difference? in the last like 12 months or so since shit's really catching fire for you in terms of just like was it things you were doing differently was it a certain record that went crazy like why do you think like you got the most eyes on you like right, right now? now i feel like the momentum going crazy right now you know what i'm saying because my brother smirk hopped up on the fuck my cousin Part two. record yeah. yeah he hopped on that record so a lot of more people reaching out you know what i'm saying niggas i hit seeing the message like hey oh i ain't even see this what up like you know, like everybody, everything falling in place since since bro hopped on the record with me. Yeah, I feel like we always talk about how people get the Drake stimulus package. Yeah, for there's sure. like a such thing as a Dirk stimulus package yeah, these days. Yeah, for sure. Nine, nine days, bro. My daughter. When gang, Dirk gets gang, on a record, gang, gang like turning niggas' career around. Like mm -hmm. folks hop on the record. I mean, we talked about Vezo. He had up the skull, which I feel like yeah. really put him in a different yeah, space. Dirk, Dirk hopped on that motherfucker, took him out of that Boston Richies. Dirk hopped on that, yeah. took him out of that. Like, blood golden in this shit. He stamped shit for sure. 100%. Um, for people who have never heard Fuck My Cousin, yeah. the song title's wild. Right, for sure. Explain Fuck My Cousin. It was like I just couldn't sugarcoat it, you know? That's what it was, you know? I got a lot of cousins that's on the other side with the ops. Shit so like if that. you have a family member who's on the other side with the ops, fuck them. Hell yeah, fuck them, because they're going to think the same about you. Fuck you. Mm. You an op, you know? Like, of course it wasn't like, I ain't seen these niggas since I was a kid, you know what I'm saying? But them my cousins, though, you feel me? So it really ain't no relationship that anyway. You feel what I'm saying? It's just that we know we cousins, you know, and it's up. He on that side, I'm on this side. It have been times I'd have gave my cousin them passes, like, nah, folks, don't do that. Or nah, I was gonna keep him moving. Or catch him, he's so goofied out, he's such a fucking clown. Catch him, smack him up, punch him up, put it on camera, upload it on the gram or something, like just treat him like a flat. Allegedly. Yeah, like yeah. shit like that. Like right. But hell yeah, my homie them see my cousin them it's up. I see my cousin them it's up. Is there a is there like a family like okay? Because you could be you could be cousins with somebody and barely know them. Yeah, for sure. Right. That's that's and that's and that's, that's normal. And that's what it really is like with the cousins that I'm in tour with. Okay. You feel what I'm saying? Like I know them. I grew up with them, but it's like ain't no bond or no relationship there. You know what I'm saying? For me to feel some type of way. You have a you know? stronger bond with your brothers that are... Yeah, my brothers and my sisters. Like, I got real actual cousins that I know that would never turn on me, never go fuck with the ops, never do no out-of-order shit or cross me, you know? I got cousins like that. That's my real family. Right, that you, you know? grew up with, that you were yeah, super close that with. I'm super, super close with, for sure. Damn. Does the auntie ever call, like, your mom and be like, hey... Yeah, it have it, been times like that in the past, like... Even one of my ops that's dead, like his daddy is from where well, my mama and my daddy them from. Well, I grew up at as a kid though. You know, right. Then I moved from over there, but my mama them from over there. That's where they grew up at all their life. 
Forty Third State Street. You know, like, and he he came and talked to me like, yeah, y'all leave that shit alone, y'all family, woo woo woo. You know, but this shit too deep, like blood shit behind this shit already. So, a motherfucker really can't take that shit back. I think that's what civilians have a hard time wrapping their head around why the cycle doesn't stop. And I think what they don't understand is once blood is shed, it's like almost like, and I'm not talking about your, I'm not talking about, for the record though, I I won't make it clear. I'm not talking about you or any situation you're, I just mean in terms of gang violence in general. Yeah, it's just like, bro, you got to understand, bro. If, if you kill me, I got kids, I got little brothers, I got cousins. That are going to want to get their get back. Boy, they ain't going to play about me. They ain't going to forget about me, boy. Right. It's going to be generations and generations of this shit. You feel me? This shit go on go, and go on. Like, generations for real, for real. Like, motherfuckers and it's, don't and, and it's not possible. You took a motherfucker love one out this shit. Motherfucker ready to, man, motherfucker ready to go all out, you know? Did you see uh, recently 21 Savage spoke about, like, in Atlanta, obviously there's a lot of gang violence or a lot of gun violence happening. Did you see what 21 Savage had said? He just kind of was trying to put a message out there to everybody to, like, kind of, you know, try to I keep. I think I saw a post when he was like, we 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 need to do better or something. Yeah, do like better, that. try yeah. to keep the peace. Like, mm-hmm. do you think, like, it would take somebody, like, in that position to kind of, like, do the same thing in Chicago or it doesn't matter? Like, I mean, I feel like. Like I told you, it's like we I know me personally, bro, we was in wars from generations ago that my big homie and my old and them homie them was in. You feel yeah. what I'm saying? And then it just, it just came down. It just kinda gets down. passed like, on. So like that's that shit will never be over with. I don't care who you is, bro. Like that shit'll never be over with. Niggas can't come to an agreement and come to each other and talk and be like, let's squash this shit or leave it alone or uh, or he gonna be considered a hoe, he gonna be considered a bitch ass nigga, a pussy ass nigga, niggas pride in the way. That shit ain't gonna never end. It feels like pride is probably the biggest uh, thing standing in the way in a lot of that shit, right? Yeah, for sure. But, you know, like I told you, death too. Pride and death. Yeah, uh, yeah. Niggas got locked up since the 80 years, he told, and he's still out of jail. Niggas been trying to kill him. Mm. Like, this shit, it's all type of situations. <laughs> Do you think like um, for someone like yourself that has found a way to get out of that environment is like the only right thing to do is to kind of get out of Chicago and, and, and try Yeah, to... yeah. Like I told you, I'm in L.A. now. So you feel me? You, you think go... of someone like Chief Keef? I don't think Chief Keef's been back for I don't know how long, but you know, it feels like he got about the oh, way. I don't know. So some like goddamn and snuck. And never told nobody. He never told. <laughs> he was just out. You know what I mean? <laughs> nah, but for the most part, though, I don't think he's been out there, but... Hell yeah, like, it's better to just get away. You know, it's better to just get the fuck out the city. You already got, like, I'm just saying me, I already got ops, hella ops. You feel right. what I'm saying? And this money and this motherfucking fame, this shit bring more enemies and more problems and bullshit. You feel what I'm saying? So that just add on. So it's best to just get the fuck away, get out to the city, tuck off, and run that shit up. And take care of your people, for real, for real. This shit really dried up in the streets. This shit over with. Yeah. I think that's smart, man. Hey, what up? It's Boulay Kev. We got to stop the interview to tell you about our good friends at my bookie. Football season has started. My favorite time of the year because I love to gamble on football. It makes watching football so much fun. It's my, like, literally, I just love watching football and I love it even more when I got money on the line. And no matter where you are right now, what state, what country, you can get in on the action. It's winning season. Go to my bookie. Sign up for a new account, register, and get that double deposit bonus using the promo code BOOTLEG. Now, let me tell you what that means. That means when you go to my bookie, let's say you make a $250 deposit using the promo code BOOTLEG, you'll have $500 to gamble with. That's right. They're going to double your fucking money right now. They got the prop builder you could bet on uh, whether or not, I don't know, will Matthew Stafford throw for three touchdowns? Will Kyler Murray rush for a touchdown? You can put all those on one thing and secure the motherfucking bag, all right? Get online with your boy. Let's get this money together. My bookie, go sign up with that promo code bootleg and double your deposit right now. Go register. Help me understand because, you know, so sometimes I get frustrated from the outside looking in when I see people who have real beef mm-hmm. with, like, real people who are from their city, like situations that you were just talking about. 
but then we'll beef with rappers that aren't from their city. And then that equals shit. And it's like, almost like, yo, like rap beef is so, it's turning into something very serious. Obviously people have lost their lives in some of these beefs, but. Yeah, cause this shit ain't, this shit ain't back then. Like how you would see, like. You see, like you see, like Fifty Cent, Fifty and Ja Rule and or something. Ja Rule or P Diddy, like they'll be like on the internet going back and forth arguing, like real, 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 real. But it's like you don't never see nobody dead behind it, or you don't never see it like go up for real, for right. real. So motherfuckers on the outside from a street street standpoint, like man, that shit fake. Them niggas doing that. That's a publicity stunt or some shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, like us nowadays, like. It ain't no faking. Like, we don't know how to fake. We too real for this shit. Like, we don't know how to fake. Like, if it's up, it's up. We ain't finna, we ain't finna do no shit. Well, I'm gonna stop saying we, me. I ain't finna do no shit to hop on the internet and be like, I was up with him or was cracking with him and da 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 And then we see each other, we shaking hands or we taking a picture or a photo. If I say it's up, it's really that. You feel me? But I got that side of me. I'll come to you and talk like a man and get an understanding, you know what I'm saying? If it ain't no blood shit behind it or if it ain't nothing serious, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I feel like the rap shit, sometimes like it turns, it starts with something like extremely weird and petty and then yeah. sometimes it just gets serious quick. Like it's yeah. like, it goes from like some weird internet shit, someone's on Instagram live saying some this passive aggressive this, this shit. generation different. Yeah. This generation different. Our temper's bad. Motherfucker just ready to go off the bridge at any given moment. Yeah, yeah. It's 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 like I'm, it's unfortunate too, man, because it's like I just see this shit too much. I'm like, you gotta Yo. be a nigga like me. You gotta hide this head in this head. You hear me? I got two heads on my shoulders. What do you mean by that? What two heads on my shoulders? Yeah. This right here, I could be this way right here, and I could be this way right here. Because I've heard yeah. the music. It feels like you know you got <laughs> you got some pretty aggressive records. Yeah. <laughs> Um, how was your? Did you have a relationship with Vaughn before he passed? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Vaughn, me and Vaughn used to always be in the inbox tweaking with each other, kicking any shit like that. Me and Bro was supposed to do a record together, but Blood was getting hot. He was doing that. Heating up he, for sure. He needed to do it, and I was doing what the fuck I needed to do. You know, trying to figure my shit out. But yeah, hell yeah, Blood was a cool lies down to earth nigga for sure. For people who don't know, what uh, what part of Chicago are you from? I'm from like the southwest side, 63rd, California, the kids. That's across western, 6300 bad. How far is that from? Because everyone knows O Block. They got a, it's on that's, GTA that's, now. So, like, like I'm on, my hood is from 61st to 67th, California, okay. the kids. Okay. So, like, you be seeing the fans tweaking under my shit, like, ah, oh, Zay from 63rd. How he doing a song with, with Dirt? Like, I'm from 63rd, but I'm from 63rd off the other side of Chicago. They on the east side. I'm on the southwest side. Got you. You feel what I'm saying? So, all I got to do is get on 63rd in California and ride straight down to um the east side and be, be in O Block. You feel me? It's just like a straight shot down. Straight shot. Like 15 minutes, 20 minutes. You feel me? Do you feel like... um? For you, obviously, you know, having because I saw the OTF li uh, logo on the back of your track, yeah, your track listen, sure. are you like officially an OTF artist? Now, you know, you know, you know, Dirk, that's my mentor. You feel mm -hmm. me? Man? So it's just like really blood was just trying to get behind me on some anything I could do to what, help, anything I could do to help, whatever you need, you need to do, like I'm behind you 100% type mm. shit. You feel what I'm saying? So. We partner up on a lot of shit. That's dope. You know? What is some of the game that, you know, he you know, I, I think some people forget how long Dirk's been at this. Blood I always tell me like stay consistent. Like stay in the studio. Whatever you gotta do, go do that shit and then come back to the studio. Stay consistent. It's a new artist every day out here. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. You can't let them forget about you. You know? Yeah. And but... always be different. Mm -hmm. Don't never do what these niggas out here doing. Just do you and be different. Yeah. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, no, I feel like he's right. I mean, I think Dirk's went through a, a couple of eras of music and a couple of eras of his career where he was like on Def Jam. They were trying yeah, to have yeah, him do yeah. like. Blood got real live years of experience in this shit on a lot of levels. For sure. Uh, let's talk about Chicago hip hop. Who would you put on the Mount Rushmore of Chicago rap? 
That's four people. We got to put four people. I got to put myself, though. No, you got to, excluding yourself. I exclude myself. I okay. Gotta, we're going to put Chief Keith. Okay. We're going to put Juice Rura, Chance the Rapper, and Smirk. And Dirk. Yeah. No Kanye. Kanye cool, but I can't put Kanye up there. You put Kanye over Chance? Like, that's, that's, that's... Or you put Chance over Kanye? Yeah, like, Chance, I feel like it's our era of Kanye. That's you, fair. You know what I'm saying? That's like, fair. That's fair. Kanye West, that's y'all era. My mama and daddy them. Right. You ain't finna catch me riding through the city off no yay. That's I fair. I ain't gonna lie, but I fuck with yay music. I fuck with yay no, as a fair. person. We both Geminis and some more shit, like, you know what I'm saying? But, like... Why do you think that is like in Chicago? There's such a uh, dynamic range of artists that are like you got the chances, you got like the Vic Mensas, the Kanyes, the Commons, and then on the other side you got the Chief Keefs, the Dirks, guys like yourself. Like it's like either like super artsy, very like you know heavily like art involved rap, and then there's like the hardcore gangster shit. Like, but but is is it because they grew up in different areas or I don't, I don't really know the history behind like all those people um, all those people like That's common fair. and like all of them like I don't, I can't even tell you the street common grew up on for real like I don't really know Do you ever listen never, to common probably when pops or somebody was listening to yeah. him man he never went Chicago legend there. twister too yeah yeah twister for sure I went to the gun range with twister and shit we twister shooting. took you to the gun range yeah. Twister took me to the gun range. Me and a lot of my homies, we were shooting guns and shit. He was showing us all the exclusive ass guns he got and shit. All type of big crazy ass shit. No, I know he's like Twister, he's though. like training people like how to yeah. get their gun permit and yeah. That's what he. That's what he. That's what he gonna do with me. That's he fire. Trying to give me my gun permit. Shout out shit. to Twister. Shout Twister's Twister, a great guy. How did he just reach out to you? How did that? How did that end up happening? Um, I think we were supposed to have been doing a song or some shit, and then you know we was just on some regular shit like. It's beyond the song type shit. Like, let's mm -hmm. just build, you know, on some big bro, little bro shit, you know? Like, he's a good dude. Yeah. For, for sure. sure. Shout out to say hey, He's a fucking legend. Shout out to Chicago, man. Uh, on Fuck My Cousin, you were saying if you, you don't like the fucking ops posts. Uh, if you like the ops If you posts. like the ops posts. So let me ask you this, right? Hypothetically speaking. Yeah. You have like a, a relative that's close to you. Yeah. And we're talking like in this song, from what I gather, yeah, if them. you're cool with my ops or if I'm cool with you, that means that you can't you can't be fucking with the ops. Is that fair? Yeah, yeah. Like if I'm fucking with you and you fucking with my ops, shit, you might backdoor me. You might give me smoke. You might set me up, rob me. Well, I don't know. So if you're cool I with can't somebody, I trust you. If you cool with somebody that's trying to kill me, or so let me ask you this, me. right? So like hypothetically speaking, like you, will you inherit someone's beef that you're fucking with, or will you just kind of be like, I ain't, I ain't beefing with him, but I'm not fucking with him. No, that's the type of nigga I am. I ain't beefing with him, but I'm not fucking with him. That's you fair. Know what I'm saying, um. Play both sides or right. be in the middle because I know being in the middle lead to a lot of other shit. Niggas don't be righteous. Nigga really be like, I'm in the middle and really be over there right. plotting to come get your ass. You feel me? So I don't trust none of that shit. If you fuck with them, fuck with them. No, I ain't fucking with you. Yeah, because I think some people saw, um, I think Rich the Kid had dinner with, uh, with Dirk. But Rich the Kid has an album with a young boy. So a lot of people were like, what the fuck is going on here? Right. Right. I feel like uh, uh, like the young boy and Smirk shit, like it's, it's, it's happening. But I feel like a lot of artists on real time and if things just throwing they self, you a bitch ass, goofy ass, lame ass nigga. If you just hop out there throwing yourself at somebody beef, you don't really got no relationship with the nigga. You don't really, nothing. You just dick ride. It's almost like, like it's like a, 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 a some clout chasing shit, low key. Yeah, like like that's just dick riding, gang. Mm -hmm. If you hopping in another motherfucker beef, they don't got nothing to do with you. I agree. I just yeah. I, I agree. I agree with you. Yeah, for sure. I think like at the end of the day, like it's a, like I think that that Dirk uh, young boy thing is like one of those things that like to me felt like some rap shit. Yeah. And it was like okay, yeah, obviously. Now see, I knew it wasn't no rap shit, folks. Like. You gotta understand, like I know niggas around Dirk. I know right. Dirk personally. Like we've been locked in for years since way before this shit. 
You feel what I'm saying? Like, I was even fucking with a few of NBA and all late homies over there. Yeah. You feel what I'm saying? Like, but Smirk numbers from my city, I've been locked in with them for a long, long time. Like, it's real live love with them like that. You mm-hmm. feel what I'm saying? But I'm not out here. Oh fuck, young boy! Yeah. Ooh, right, you're not jumping out of do that. that that's nothing. what I mean. That's what I mean. That I think yeah. that's, but I think that's important. That ain't me. Because I and think then, some people would do that, and you I know think, how they'll be. They'll see me on the song with Smirk and all the fans like, ah, oh, you, uh, you into a young boy? Uh, yeah, which is fucking. You know, I think a lot of this shit too is like fans push that shit, dude. Yeah, they they they, they push that shit. Like, I think like if you think of what's going on with Kodak and Young Boy right now, it feels like it's all fan. The fans created some bullshit between two artists that should have no problems. They're not from the same section. They're not from fucking the same state. It's just some fan shit that oh, yeah. turns into some real shit or, you know, some internet shit, I guess. But about your questions, though, about Rich the Kid sitting in the room and shit like that, I don't really got no comment on it. If he one of them niggas that's just really in the middle and don't got nothing to do yeah, with Yeah, I think, it, like, Rich is obviously no somebody who was, it was like a big dinner with a lot of people, and it's yeah, like, he's a, no fuck. he's a fucking and businessman. We, and we don't get no fuck. And, and, and that environment, and you right here fucking with the ops, or you and two or four of them was that, it's up with you. Mm. You feel what I'm saying? So, four of them was in a dinner with him, so I know they ain't feel no type of threat, or he won, he won, he couldn't have been on shit to... You know, hundred percent to be sitting there. So, um, Mr. Kid, he out of this. Appreciate y'all watching, but listen, our partners at Blue Chew, they got you handled, fellas and etcs. Whatever you are, they got it. If you got a dick, Blue Chew is for you because they will make sure your dick performs at all time levels. I mean, like LeBron, his first three seasons with the Heat type levels. I mean, your wife will thank you for it. Everybody will thank you for it. Shit, even if you just take a Blue Chew and jerk your dick, it's a it's a stronger jerk. I swear to God, stronger cock jerk for sure. You're going to be beating your dick like it stole something. So what you got to do is go to bluechew.com right now. Use the promo code bootleg right now, and you're going to get your first month free. And this is the great thing about Blue Chew. The same active ingredients as Viagra and as Cialis, but uh, you don't got to go to the doctor's office. Yeah, who wants to go hang out at the doctor's office and be like, hey, doc, you got some cock pills for me? Nobody wants to do that. No, you sign up at Blue Chew, use the promo code bootleg, and you're getting your first month delivered to your door in discreet packaging. I'm telling you, you're going to thank me later. All right, if you've gotten Blue Chew already, just DM me. Tell me, just just DM me, no photos. Just tell me, how. You know. let me just tell you, it's fucking amazing. Our producer Cyrus's dad, he's 70, took the Blue Chew, He's fucking just beating down all the senior citizen pussy available in Arizona right now. So go to bluechew.com, use that promo code bootleg, or just hit the link in the description of this video. Let's get back to the interview. You know, when you think of like some of your peers and like how they've evolved musically, right? Think of Dirk. Like Dirk's evolved musically in like a level that's like crazy. Like, you know, if you heard some shit from nine years ago and you heard some shit today, it's like it's like night and day. Like, you know what I mean? His pen's gone crazier. The record's gone crazier. What are you doing, like, just on the artist side to, like, push yourself when you're in the studio? Are you fucking working with new producers? Like, how's your writing process? Are you taking things you learn from other artists and applying it to your craft? Like, just in terms of just improving the craft of, like, your records and just as an artist, as an MC, like, what are the things that you're trying to always improve? Um, I feel like I'm always trying to improve, like, storytelling. Mm. Like, getting my words out better, like putting it together. This happened, this happened, that happened. Why this happened? Like I'm that creative trying to put the songs together yep. like that for people to really understand, you know what I'm saying? And not just in my rap, just like talking about this thing and then go all the way to this subject and that like niggas be jumping around and shit. For sure. Storytelling's important, man. Yeah. What's some of your favorite like uh, storytelling records as a fan? Because there were some great ones. Um... Crazy story by King Von. Mm-hmm. Um, what else? I can say. One of my records called Survive. Mm, who else did some storytelling shit? Oh, I think um, Speaker Knockers, I think. Okay. What was that song he made back then? I can't even remember the song, but I think I fucked with one of his stories. There's a lot of motherfuckers. I just can't really think off the top of my head. You got to listen. There's a Jay-Z. Which one? 
I think, yeah, I think. Rico? Ian Meek Speaker? Mill had one, bro. Ian Meek Mill had one. Shout out Meek, yeah. bro. He had one, too. There's a I Jay-Z song. The next time you get a chance to... My manager loves Jay-Z. Listen, listen there's a Jay-Z, Jay-Z record. He want to be Jay-Z. It's called Meet the Parents. Yeah. Just listen to that record, but focus. Out of scratch, I got a record called Meet the Parents with another artist. So the song is about Jay-Z's rapping uh, from the perspective of three different people. A kid dies, he gets shot, right? So he's rapping from the perspective of that kid. He's ra- He gets killed by his dad. His dad doesn't know it's his kid. He's rapping from the perspective of the dad and he's rapping from the perspective of the, of the mom. It's fucking crazy. But like every time you listen to it, you'll hear like a new like, it's almost like a Quentin Tarantino movie, but on record. My yeah. favorite storytelling record ever. My suggestion, just a little, you know, an old head suggestion. Jay Z meet the parents. That'll okay, step your storytelling shit up. Yeah, smoke. You got more weed? We got all this weed right No, up. there's definitely that's t shirts. I can get you a pre roll though. Grab a pre roll out of there. No, hell no. I don't smoke pre roll. I smoke grabber. Oh, I mean this this is a this is a, a raw paper. No, nah, it's it's good for you. I mean, it's cool. I ain't fucking you only smoke the grab a leaf? Yeah, the grab a leaf. The thing about the leaf is like, it's such a process. Like, you pull this fucking thing out of a bag. Yeah, no, I'll be ripping that bitch in two seconds. Yeah, I was in the studio the other day with uh, Tory Lanez, and every time he needed to fucking roll something new, I'm just seeing him pull this fucking leaf out. And I'm just like, they really stuff a whole ass leaf in a bag. And then you just find your the part you like. And then <laughs> I'm going to tell you this like, I, I don't have any rolling uh, talents, and I can only imagine the gravel leaf looks like the hardest thing to roll. Nah, hell no, nah, it's actually easy. See, that's why I like the bra- the. the Man, pump. you can roll it to however amount of weed you got. You got some little weed. You can roll well, yeah, it because it's it. a fucking yeah. leaf. Yeah, <laughs> you can just cut what you yeah, need. Yeah, you cut what you need. Yeah. Did you have you always smoked gravel leaves? Hell yeah, no, nah, I was. I had my run with backwoods, and I was smoking hella backwoods. I can't fuck with the backwoods. Had my runs with the leaves, and I was smoking just leaves. Nah, it's just gravel. But you were I'm never smoking niggas. papers though. No, I would never smoke paper. You know, if you ever probably go- when I was a young nigga smoking leaves off the tree and some more goofy shit. All the big, like the big, big smokers, Wiz, Burner, they only smoke papers. You fuck with Burner? That's because they probably getting old and shit. They don't want to fuck up their body right now. <laughs> it's an old guy shit. It's yeah, some old guy it's shit. Old guy shit. They getting old and they ain't trying to be around this bitch. Losing their breath all day. It's good for you though. Yeah. I mean, I don't know if it's good for you. Let's say when that. I get old, I'm start smoking papers. When I get old in the thirty, do they do the uh, spliffs in Chicago where you get the tobacco and you put everybody it in? smoke backwoods? Everyone's on backwoods. Yeah. Jeez. Everybody smoke backwoods. Yo, uh, in terms of uh, shout out to the Bulls, the Bulls had a little. Are you like a basketball fan? I'm a basketball fan, but I ain't going to lie. I'm a Warriors fan. Stephen Curry and Clay oh. Thompson, my favorite two players. But. It's disgusting. You're from but, Chicago. But you know, I know, but I go to the Bulls game. I support the Bulls. And They've game. only been good for like six years, the Warriors. Yeah. It don't matter, though. Like I was, I really got hooked to basketball in jail. I wasn't no basketball watching ass nigga. It's, I was in jail on some boys. When the Warriors were good. And really got hooked to the Warriors because they was going so crazy. I got the betting on their ass in jail and everything. Damn. Yeah. But, this guy's from Chicago. He's a Warriors fan. Yeah, yeah. Shout out to Bulls, though. You know, that's home team. Uh, you got Alex Caruso. You got... Uh, I don't know nobody on the Bulls. I knew... Only nigga I was fucking with from the Bulls is Wendell Carter, but he traded from the He got Bulls. traded. Yeah, he got traded. Yeah. Somewhere else. I think he's on the uh, Magic now. I told my boy, well, he should have stayed at the Bulls. I don't think it was up to him. He got traded. Oh, uh, yeah? <laughs> yeah, he got what traded. Saying he was weak? No, I don't know. He's on the he's on the uh, magic now. Ah, uh, he's saying he was weak, Brody. No, I'm saying nah, like... <laughs> Wendell Carter. Though. Shout out to him. Yeah, shout out, Brody. Uh, how often do you go home? Um, like it's it's early on. I just moved to LA, so it was really like I'd be on some home sick shit. Mm. Want to go chill, phone them. Want to go do other shit? I fly out. Just wake up to... in the morning to be like, come on, go. Were you able to bring your family with you? Yeah, yeah. that's important. Yeah, for sure. You got your mom up out of there. Yeah, for sure. That's super important, man. Well, my mom, she ain't, she ain't come yet. She hasn't come yet. <laughs> she be saying she don't want to leave Chicago. Get her out of there, man. She got my grandma. She got to take care of Get both of them out yeah. of there. I be telling them. She says she's scared to ride a plane. What? You got to yeah. send her a sprinter or something. Yeah, she 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 she, she tuck low right now, though, but she definitely finna come out here. I'm going to make her. 
Is she like out of the area at least? Yeah, for sure. Different area? Yeah. Yeah. Very. Yeah, yeah. You're are you, like cuz for people who don't know like obviously Chicago is a very segregated city. It's probably one of the more heavier se- like segregated cities in the country. Like there's would you say so in terms of just like this area is this area I had um Iman, Iman Shumpert on and he was talking about just how segregated think, it is. I think I mean, I've been to a lot. I don't know. I just I and I'm from the rack for real and I've been everywhere in the rack. You know, it's probably been a lot, a couple of cities I ain't been to in Illinois, but like for the most part, I feel like I see black people everywhere. Right. Like literally, I don't give a fuck if I'm in this little ass town. I'm gonna see at least one black person. No, for sure, for sure, yeah, for sure. But for the most part, it probably is segregated because I go somewhere and I see none but Mexicans over here. Then I go so I see none but white people over here. Then you go over here, it's none but black people and probably a couple Mexicans stay on the block. You know, like shit like I heard they have decent Mexican food in Chicago because there is a Hell big yeah, there is a big Mexican. Mes- I'm f- I'm from a Mexican like area. They don't got the best. Relax. Come you're on, you're, in Calipor- you're in California. You're in California. Oh, tacos, whack as hell. Where did like, you go? I went to Pink Taco. I went to motherfucking. That's your uh, fucking problem. Nah, look, look, look. Pink look. Taco went, is look, white look. people tacos. All right, listen, let me tell you. I went to no, nah, that that one Mexican food. I mean, I went to. You have but to. I went to a couple spots where they had tacos. I had. Was it a truck? Game. Was it a truck? I did the truck before too, but that it wasn't only the truck though. You have to go to Leo's Taco Truck. Leo's Taco Truck. I don't like eating at the trucks. I feel like I be getting sick, or maybe it's just a mind thing. It's, it's a mind thing. I Listen, just feel like I be getting sick. Like you can't trucks. bring up Pink Taco though. That shit was so weak. I it's god awful, up, but Pink Taco is fucking white. It's a white. Person owned establishment. I'm assuming this, this when I first got down. Her first nah. time me ever coming to L. A. When I got signed to Warner in 2019. Mm. I'm trying to find hell of shit to eat. I can't find it. Nah, since since then I've been out here a hundred times and I still nah 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 nah, nah nah nah. I gotta get you no, right. No whole pizza got the good wings. <sighs> That's it. Like I don't really and y'all look dry through like all the other. You spots. gotta tap in, man. Yeah, I gotta tap. Are you, you in the valley? In You're like yeah, over this way. Yeah. Yeah, there's great. Come on, literally just drive around North Hollywood or, and just. Or Chef Grizzlies, fuck with that. Nah, I don't know what that is. That's some black people shit. Chef Grizzlies, yeah. fire. Macaroni steak, all type of shit. Like I'm that. not mad at that. I like macaroni and steaks. Not black people shit. So a lot of people. I love soul food. You ever have conch fritter? Not like that when I said black people shit. No, no, no I have fun with. I'm fucking <laughs> with you. Is it. Who else is on the album? I saw Herbo, Vezo, Derek. Who else? Uh, Herb, Vezo. PGF Nook, uh, Lil Dirt, Fredo Bang. Shout out to Fredo. He's a great guy. Yeah, that's my boy. Very, very uh, nice dude, man. What's up? Uh, what's your favorite song on the album? All of them. All of them? All, hell yeah, all of them. I feel like I overdid this one. I ain't gonna lie. I feel like this one the hardest. I really brought that Zay back for their ass. Mm. They asked the pain. They asked the drill. Do you feel like you the know? fans are... Um, I feel like they satisfied. I was gonna say, are they giving you that same feedback? They give me that feedback, bro. You went crazy. This is one of the best albums. Da, 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 da. We want some more. Let me ask I'm you. I'm thinking about doing the deluxe. I don't know yet, though. You got to do the deluxe. I feel like it's kind of the thing yet, to do. Though. I don't know yet. Cause you got you had. I feel like I'm gonna just go ghost real quick, and then come back and drop an album. I was gonna say. When you do uh, the deluxe, usually it's like you have three or four songs that you wanted to put on the album, didn't make the album, and it's easy to just throw them on there. Do you have those records I in mind? A, I got a hundred songs that didn't make the album that I wish would have made the album. It's crazy because so many artists have that, right? Where they have all these records that we'll never fucking hear. You know what I'm saying? What do you... Like, like when you cut a record, do you pretty much know within like a day whether or not it's like worth releasing? Yeah, yeah. I know right then and there, like, yeah, this one of the ones. Yeah. Or I see everybody vibe in the studio. How they and you'll know. Me. And I know. Otherwise, do you kind of look at, like, the recording process? Because if you're recording that much, you know a lot of the shit ain't going to come out. It's kind of like working out. Like, the way somebody will go practice I in, mean, in the gym. I mean, I be feeling like, shit, if it don't come out with this, it's going to come out with that. Or You know, mm. I feel like everything going to get used. It's just timing. Mm. I make real, I make a lot of type of different music. You feel me? It's just timing. You were talking earlier about uh, Juice World. Juice World, obviously, one of them ones uh, gone too soon. R.P. Juice World. Uh, he the first nigga to take me to the chain smokers' house. 
You went to the chain smokers crib. Yeah, they asked for spraying me with water guns and shit while I was asleep. I woke up, I mean, y'all ass tweaking, boy. Fuck is y'all doing? What's that? What's that? First of all, tell me this story. How did you end up with Juice World going to the chain smokers house? Cause I was in a mystic. Um, I was like um, label shopping and shit like that. Right. They like had a lot of deals on the table and shit. And I went to link up with my boy G Money and Bibby them because they was trying mm-hmm. to sign me and shit. And I, they flew me to LA and I, I went to their crib and shit. I was out there for them with them for a couple of days and shit. And me and Juice was chilling. Juice took me to the studio. With, um, Young Thug. And then we left the studio for Young Thug and, and Tank God. Then we went to the chain smokers crib. When bro, we got there, they was sitting up in that motherfucker just chopping it up and shit. Talking about let's go play laser tag and all type of shit. They was tweaking. I fell asleep, knocked out on that bitch. They was spraying me with water guns while I sleep. I wake up. Man, y'all ass tweaking, boy. Y'all white boys better uh, smack the shit out of y'all. Yeah, white boy humor's different, man. Yeah. You hang out yes. with enough white people, you get immune to some uh, interesting humor. Nah, but I, I I love white guys. You know what I'm saying? Pause. For sure, I, I fuck I fuck with them for real. I got a couple of white friends, a couple of Mexican friends. You know, just a couple is all you need. You know what I yeah, mean? For sure. Yeah. <laughs> How was so you you and Juice were pretty tight? Yeah, hell yeah, we was get we was getting tight. I ain't gonna lie, like you know, I was one of the niggas here. Wake up and be like, come on, Jay, let's go ride the dirt bikes or let's go play the Xbox. Folks was like, he was grown, but he was like always on some activity kid shit. Right, right, right. You know, folks. Yeah, he was young, man. That's what people yeah. forget. Like yeah. he was such a prolific artist, but he was barely got to live a lot of his life. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, he was on some young kid shit too, though. We gotta stop the interview. Tell you about our partners at Odd Socks. Well, first of all, let's check out the brand new collab. Look at these, the bootleg Kev sock. You see my pink ass face on those fucking socks? Nobody wants to buy those. We're going to figure out a way to give them away, though. Uh, but look, Odd Socks, the most comfortable socks in the world. Um, and the best thing about Odd Socks is they're our family, man. I've been rocking with these guys for about 10 years now, and I will not wear anything else on my feet. Like, I swear to God, I'm about to take my shoe off. I'm about to take, the, look, what is this? Smells great, too. That's an odd sock right there. That's an odd sock basic. You know what I'm saying? We fuck with odd socks. You should too. They got the crazy licenses. We're talking about Nickelodeon. Shout out to Patrick. Motherfucking Cheez-Its. Baywatch. How about macaroni underwear? Look at these boys right here. Let's just crack these motherfuckers open real quick. What do we got in here? Come on, man. Yeah, a little Pop-Tart underwear. You know what I mean? Yeah. These are the Odd Socks basics, all right? So if you go to the website right now, order you some underwear, order you some socks, use the promo code BOOTLEGKEV. That's one word all together, BOOTLEGKEV, and you will save 20% off at checkout. Go to oddsocksofficial.com. One more time, that's oddsocksofficial.com, promo code BOOTLEGKEV, and you will save 20% off your order. Of course, we're presented by Odd Socks, and we are proud to say so, all right? Let's get back to the interview. When you see, fun. I was gonna say, when you see a guy like Bibby who was able to like successfully transition from being a, a amazing artist into big CEO shit, you know what I'm saying? Does that is that something that inspires you that you kind of aspire to try to get to eventually? Like where you can sign artists, you can kind of be that. Yeah, yeah, I want to get to that point. Really, I want to rap, get real, 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 real rich to that point where I can just really like sit back and like spend time with my kids, spend time with my family, and real. Real life, live life mm-hmm. without, and then let other of, people put albums out. And you get, worries, yeah, yeah. like I want to sit on my ass and have M's coming in. You feel me? That's that's the way to go, man. Yeah. Are you doing anything like that? Like in terms of like the money you're making, are you reinvesting it or like? The, yeah, for sure. Yeah. What are you doing? It ain't no real live like crazy shit. Crazy shit. It's just some minor right now. That's know? good. For sure. Stay out that crypto, man. That cryptos, they're full of shit <laughs> with that crypto. You're going to end up like the guy on the couch over there? He put all his money in crypto? Look at him. You're straight? No, you're not. Not off the... How much money you got left out of that fucking money you put in your fucking crypto? You got about 10 cents left. That's what you got. That shit crashed. Come on. Come on. Take this 300K and come drop into your shit, man. (laughs) Give you 1% back. Well, listen. uh, Your project is out right now. For sure. Go run that shit up. Any more... Trench Baby 3 out right now, man. Make sure y'all go run that shit up on all platforms. Trench Baby Serious is out. Right now, my YouTube, Lizelle Osama. Make sure y'all go watch the series, man. More videos coming. Yeah. More videos coming for sure. For sure, for sure. Y'all probably be getting Trench Baby full sooner than y'all think or the deluxe. So, this is think. not going to be a trilogy. You're going to keep them going. 
I'm gonna keep him going. I'm gonna be like Wayne with this shit. What, 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 what Wayne on? He on Carter, Carter six. Well, Carter five is out, and he's he just announced Carter six. He moving slow. Yeah, I'd have been on Trench Baby Ten right now. All he is, he yeah, man. yeah. I don't know. The last couple Carters, it was not crazy about. The last one I loved was Carter three. Nah, but Lil Wayne though, he was one of the, one of them dudes. He got that. Shit. Were you in? Like, let me ask you this, because you're kind of like that age bracket. I was influenced like, by Lil Wayne. You were for sure. okay. I didn't yeah, know. Yeah, you know, all the whole. I was influenced because I feel like nowadays, like really heard auto tune from like Wayne for real. I feel like yeah, because nowadays the generation of young rappers coming up, I feel like we're more influenced by like Chief Keef or Future or Thug. Yeah, I'm 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 influenced by Blood and them too, you know. But like Wayne before Blood, Mm. yeah, Free YSL. There it is, man. Appreciate you pulling up. Yeah, I already know, man. Go get the album. Leg calf, man. Boom.